the 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 National Committee, especially within the U.S. Libertarian Party, has become so hierarchical, committee-driven, rule-driven that they really don't do anything. And people who go there are bureaucrats, not people who want to get things done. I really would like us to see an organization that emulates startup companies, incubators, the ones that are finding creative people and finding ways to let them do what needs to be done. That's the first thing I'd say structurally, is I'm not a big fan of the hierarchy. Uh, and again, in summary, what I believe is that structure should adapt to fit the skills of the people you have, not trying to force the skills of people you have into some kind of hierarchy. We see that on the when I was my last term as the National Committee Chair. We had an IT committee. You think, well, my God, there's got to be lots of people who understand IT in, in, in the Libertarian Party. And well, you'd think there would be. Well, the committee of three people to sit on the IT committee was formed and they never had a meeting, they never chose chair, they never did anything. So obviously the committee doesn't create action, it stands in the way of those who wanted to do things but couldn't get the committee to meet to give them permission. So I want to move more towards an organization that says, well, and here's my second example, a guy came to me two weeks ago and said, somebody I know, um, three weeks ago, maybe said, hey, I see you're working with getting this IALP going. I said, yes, I am. That's great. I want to report that I'm creating the um, Libertarian Party of Albania as we speak. What? Why Albania? He said, well, my wife's Albanian, and I'm over here right now, and I'm helping these guys get started. I'm funding the petition drive to get them on the ballot and to get organized. This guy did not ask any permission. He just did it. I want to find as many people like that that will play well and behave as good libertarians, but just get things. I want to, can I use the example of what you've got going on in, in the Netherlands right now with my involvement? Do you object to one? Is it okay if I mention what conversations you and me and Mark and Twan contacted us? Hmm? No, I'm kidding. I said my life is an open book anyway. Yes. <laughs> Twan contacted Mark Hinkle um, fairly recently about you know getting some help with seeing if we could get some money to help with um, the campaigns in Holland. And he called me up and said, "What do you think?" I said, "Well, that's great, but you know, hey, let me call some people I know. Um, they're professional campaign consultants. They um, they won the award for the best." Um, Republican local campaign in the country last year. They're professional. That's all they do. They're libertarians. Um, they happen to be in Hungary right now. So I call them up. Hey, could you give some advice? Yeah, I'd love to. That would be great. You know, and so Juan talked with them. He got, I think, some very good advice how to put together appeals. Mark talks to a donor in the U.S. how we do this. And the bottom line is just by a couple of people talking to each other, I think there's $8,000? Approximately $8,000 coming from this donor to help out the, the, the elections in, in Holland. That happens because people talk to each other and a network starts, a small network that otherwise wouldn't have existed if I didn't know Tuan and, and you know we know each other, I know Mark, Mark doesn't know the people that I know that are the campaign consultants and you know he's got the contacts with the donor and this is just four people. We, this is the number one thing that I want to see happen, is where somebody goes, you know, we need some help in Italy. Well, do you know how many Italian-Americans there are in the U.S. that still proudly wave the Italian flag, even though they've been here for six, in the U.S. for six generations? <laughs> yes, we can leverage that in the U.S. I'm sure that there's work that can be done the other way. This is the number one thing I see for this organization, is creating a network where politically-minded people can work together without bureaucracy. It means creating a network of that. So under the under the covers, that's what I think is important. Above the covers, what I think is important is presenting a single point at which libertarian, politically minded people all throughout the world can go to one site and find out what's going on. So they can just go to IALP.org and link to every libertarian party. I want that to go to the point where we start putting out press releases and news on the ILP site so that somebody can go there to say, I want to know what's happening with libertarian political stuff all over the world. So from a functional standpoint, I would want to do that with as few paid people as possible, as in like none. I really don't want to build staff if we don't have to. If we do have to have staff, 
I want them where they live. I don't want them moving to an office. I see no reason to ever open an office. ILB should never have a storefront. It should be a virtual storefront. So that's what I see as the vision. I think there's many, many things it could do under the umbrellas of helping work together. Yes, sir. So we will